think the key factor in Europe is that we're still overbanked. We're overbanked in the sense that the economy depends very heavily on bank loans, also because we have simply too many banks. So there needs to be a shakeout. Uh, it doesn't sound very friendly, but that's the way it is. Uh, We've already started to see a little bit of domestic consolidation. We've seen it a little bit in Spain. We're seeing some measures to that effect yeah. in Italy. Uh, where do you envisage that happening? Basically all around Europe. I think we have over 6,000 banks in uh, Europe, small, medium, large banks. Um, now, some people are talking about merging or takeovers of the very big banks. But if you really want to shake out and reduce cost levels, uh, create more lenient, agile banks, we need a shake out at the more smaller level banks. Uh, so I would hope that that um, will take place in the coming years. It's crucial for service levels, it's crucial to reduce costs uh, and to create some scale that uh, addresses the economic uh, issues. Just to pick up on that point, do you not think then that cross-border merger activity is going to be a key focus for 2019? I think we will see more of that, but it's very important that national supervisors are being restricted by the European supervisor. They cannot go on protecting liquidity inside national borders. They cannot go on protecting their national banks. Some banks will have to go. Liquidity will have to be able to move around in order to facilitate a process badly needed uh, of scaling up the banking sector and simply reducing the very high number of banks in Europe. So when we talk about the European financial system, one of the topics that comes up a lot is that of risk sharing versus de-risking. If you look at Italian banks today, we've seen a good amount of de-risking. That has actually taken place. We've got to give them credit. There has been a good amount of deleveraging. And yet, we aren't any closer towards this concept of risk sharing, the European Deposit Insurance Scheme. Who needs to cave? Yeah. So there is a lot of risk sharing already going on. Of course, we've set up the banking union. We have a, a joint resolution fund, etc. Uh, we have the principle of bail-in, which is also about risk sharing. But the deposit insurance scheme is very important. It needs to be the last leg, the last pillar of the banking union. And being quite honest, I think that in terms of risk reduction, the last couple of years have been so successful throughout banks that we really need to put EDIS back on the agenda. It's not popular in my country, the Netherlands. It's not popular in Germany. But to be fair, there's so much work has been done on risk reduction. The time has come to really strike a deal on a common European deposit insurance scheme. Do you think the time is becoming even more crucial given the volatility we're seeing in Italy these days as well? I was just looking at a chart from Deutsche Bank showing that there's a 95% correlation between Italian bank performance versus sovereign bond performance as well. So you yeah. can't really say that the banking system has delinked from the sovereign system yet. No, certainly not in Italy. Though um, Italian banks have started to reduce their exposure to their own sovereign. Uh, after years in which it only increased. So that has started, but it'll take many years to come. I think Italy is a case in itself. Uh, to be quite honest, the Italian government will have to save Italy. The markets won't do it. Europe won't do it. Italians need to address their own issues. The current situation is, with all this infighting uh, of the populist uh, coalition, uh, that we're simply losing time. And that is a scarce commodity in Italy. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.